The Lazy Dads podcast contains lots of swearing. Lots and lots of swearing. You have been warned. You're listening to The Lazy Dads Guide to Movies in association with The Session Booth. Your one-stop shop for video production, social media management and graphic design. <laughs> Derek, I'm fucking bollocks. Will you give us a glass of jingle there, will you? <laughs> it's our team song here. And we're back. That's the worst so far. We're back. <laughs> That's the worst so far. I have to think them up on the spot. We're the guest, Mr. Mark Daly. Oh, uh, no, boo. Should we, uh, boo should all we the guests? Oh, okay. It's fair. I feel more included then. That's yeah, right. exactly. We probably sound the same because we're cut from the same you genome. We actually look the same. We are genetically identical. It's hilarious. I'm just, I'm seeing quadruple here. In fairness, I was going to say, how many times have we been out and about and people think we're brothers or twins and shit? You do, it's the um, beards. We, we just, we've had questions for our parents. Mm. Um, they've never really given us straight answers. It's a, avoided a lot. It's definitely a John claude Van Damme thing going on. Double Time. impact. Time cop. No, double impact with the two or twins. What's your John claude Van Damme maximum risk with the two twins? No, it's, it's, it is double impact. No, you're yeah, right, there's yeah, another yeah, one though. Yeah, double impact. Double impact there and can't be another one. there is, there's maximum risk. Derek, if any director ever sat down to make a John claude Van Damme film where there's two John claude Van Dams in it, They'd have to just say, oh, well, we can't do that because the best two, very, two John Claude Van Damme film has ever has already been done. No, no, no. The best two, two John Claude Van Damme <laughs> <laughs> No, there's another one called Maximum Risk where the twin dies at the start. Well, so, as a baby. So no. it's just a film with John Claude Van Damme. So, so, yes, but the two of them in it for a split second. He's like, why are you dying? Uh, that's early but I can't, 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 can't. was holding holding baby John Cotton, <laughs> <and he's dying. laughs> yeah, have you never seen twins oh? don't die <laughs> get to the incubator <laughs> so, so yeah. do we have any housekeeping uh, no uh, no we do a couple of shouts anyway yeah Barry Evans Kevin Shields <laughs> Phil Barr done yeah the usual the usual Mark of course for Mark being is here, here today. yes here. right Marco so we are recording here. again after work here, yeah, after work, so we're all bollocks story. Yeah. But here's one for us that say to you we may have to lift the embargo on TLJ. Today. Why? Why do I go? Mark has some fucking points he wants to make about it. Uh, I'm not sure. You're not, oh, no, 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 hang on, and you're not allowed to speak about it then. And I'm not allowed to speak about no, it. No, I can't. It's, <laughs> it's, a la- it's a lazy <laughs> dad's. <laughs> the, lazy dad's <laughs> the lazy dad's embargo. You have to remain silent. Uh, he's a dad, and he's lazy. Yeah, no, what I'm saying is we're the, the, the consistent co-hosts of this best podcast in the world trademark so you cannot speak about The Last Jedi whereas Mark can spill his guts it. if you said it that <laughs> means I get to talk about no, it once, but no. once. You get to like raise one, one counter argument okay right. one counter argument but, but if he I'm mentions it again it. I get another one I'm That's fair. It. so you keep him track then you just do little checklists yeah I have a lot there, of times Derek I can say it as much as I want you can say it as much as you want yeah class I mean I won't <laughs> <laughs> Half an hour round about where we were going to run this, and he just never mentions TLJ ever again. What are your thoughts on Temple of Doom? Um, Where does it rank in the Indiana Jones quadrilogy, quadrilogy, um, quartet? It ranks below nothing. I mean, all of them, really, except for the King of the Crystal Skull. King of the Crystal Skull is definitely a solid tree for me. I mean, Temple of Doom's number four all day long. Really? Yeah, Yeah. that's not. Numero uno. So that's your favourite one? That's my favourite one, yeah. Very specifically, Bar, yeah. I opened, about three weeks ago, sat down to watch Indiana Jones with my daughter. And we watched the first one. Mm-hmm. And then we watched the third one. And then I didn't watch any more. <laughs> <laughs> and she looked at the TV and said, what are those two other Indiana Jones movies? <laughs> don't, worry, don't, don't worry about that. It's France. Probably not a bad way of watching them, in fairness. Um, but but like, like the, the, the temple, temple of Doom does have its charm. Like, like when I watched it as a kid, I loved the bits like call oh, you man pulling the heart out and then him getting eaten by alligators at the end. I like, fucking love that It scene. does have the best Indiana Jones film ever type of charm, bar, of course, our aforementioned embargo character. Well, it, it does have that SR. SR, yeah. Pushing big boardy <laughs> men and fighting shit rack, <laughs> shit rack, Flashing big boardy men with fucking axes and stuff at the end. Yeah, that's fucking stupid. But, like, but that right, aside, what drove me up the walls about Crystal Skull? I thought Crystal Skull was great fun. What people drove me up was like, oh, I'm fucking, you know, I'm being carried off my beat joint dance. All look at him swinging on the vines. All these stupid scenes. I was like, 
Yeah, there was Ghosts and Riders of the Lost Ark. Uh, there was, uh, uh, what you call it, they jumped out of an airplane and survived by inflating a dinghy halfway down and then riding the mountain down to India in, in Temple, Temple of Doom. Yeah, and then fucking, it class. Yeah, it was class. <laughs> yeah. It's just because we watched them when we were younger. Like, we, like, we, like, we, we accepted them all. Like, I'm gonna, my young lad fucking loves them. slightly disagree with you there. Temple of Doom is nowhere near as good as the other three. I think it's because of the passage of time and... Temple of Doom, as the Temple of Doom has aged the worst ever. No, 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 Crystal Skull. You, is, said, you said Temple I meant Crystal Skull. Temple of Doom is the best of them. Uh, Crystal Skull is the worst of them. And it's not that bad. Like, it's not a car crash. But it's nowhere near as good as the other three. What was your take? We went, oh, we were sat in the cinema. Crystal, Crystal Skull, Skull we see in the cinema. Together. Um, the um, so well. I have no major problems. I just don't like it. I think I didn't like the character of Mutt. I thought uh, Mutt that was the um, Shia uh, LaBeouf Shia LaBeouf oh, yeah. that was his character Shithead LaBeouf yeah uh, wasn't a big fan he's of him he's a great actor he might be a fucking lunatic but he is objectively a great actor okay well I objectively have... seeing him swing with CG monkeys through the trees was one of the worst things I've ever seen <laughs> that was in that, cinema that was a, ter- <laughs> was a terrible scene uh, my major problem with the the Crystal Skull was just the fact that Harrison Ford is too old now to be in Indiana Jones and the thought shit. that they might make another one with Harrison Ford as Indiana Jones again actually terrifies me. I think it'll ruin my memory of Indiana Jones. Ah, won't the, the Indiana Jones films are there? Like that's like saying if Jaws was remade today, say, and there was a it was a CGI shark and it was crap. It's not going to ruin Jaws. I mean, Jaws Revenge yeah, is that exactly. <laughs> <laughs> no, it didn't. I take it back. Jaws Revenge was my favorite films of all time. Jaws 3D did that. Jaws 3D did that. Yeah. No, I like. I don't think that making new films ruins old ones. Just it's shit you seeing characters that you love being yeah. treated badly. Yeah. yeah. Like Die Hard 4 and 5 are the prime examples of that. Die Hard is one of my most favourite films of all time. I like Die Hard 2, it's alright. I really like Die Hard 3. Die Hard 4 and 5 are shit. And it's not John McClane. And it's Bruce Willis just not giving a shit. Whereas if you yeah, look at much. in The Force Awakens when Harrison Ford comes back to play Han Solo... It's fucking Hans Oliver. Oh, it is. Hans Do you know what I mean? All, all and it is Indiana Jones you're looking at, but you're right, Mark, is that he doesn't have that physicality anymore that he had in his, whatever, fucking torties when he made them original. Oh, the man fucking crashed an airplane there yes, only exactly. a couple of years ago and walked out of records <laughs> like a hero. But that's with the fourth or fifth plane he crashed. I know, He yeah. shouldn't be doing it. What was the son said? He, 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 he is the man you think he is. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but even, I know I haven't seen Blade Runner, but it's it's Deckard in Blade Runner. And again, same thing. He, it's a continuation yeah, of the character. Yeah. But and, and just to be fair, he was yeah. brilliant in the second Blade Runner movie, Harrison Ford. Yeah. Um, but it wasn't as, as physical a role yeah, exactly, as yeah. Indiana Jones would have been. Yeah, like he's not hanging off cars <clears throat> or fucking whatever Indiana Jones does it's actually been a good old fucking opening that's probably the best opening I've ever had for a podcast I know yeah well now you've ruined it because I have to go and edit that out now because we're singing our own praises <laughs> edit two oh, podcast here fucking dead. <laughs> we're trademarking greatest podcast but going we? back to characters though, the character of Indiana Jones I don't see why he can't get old and why we can't have a film with him being old in the film that's just my, my opinion because if, he's a great character if he does the Sean Connery role in yeah uh, what was the last one called The Last Crusade, last crusade. Mm. without being a fucking rehash of The Last Crusade yeah. perfect I'd, hand, I'd be all over that yeah hand over the reins to somebody else be a Chris Pratt or what's your man's name out of Star the fucking what's it fucking called Firefox F- Fox Fire Firefly Firefly Nathan yes. Fillion Nathan Fillion yeah hand oh. over to him you know oh, oh. I'm just they're just two names I threw out there it could be fucking anybody yeah, well, I'm you know right? like it's like yeah. written and signed fucking you know, Tom, Universal are running with this there's plenty of actors out there Tom Holland could do it you well, know. I honestly think that they're going to put the coil wash on that because the Uncharted film's coming out and that's well, effectively a fucking Indiana Jones it is and going back to what you said there Tom Holland as last I heard he He's is going young, to be young, um, Nathan Drake yeah. yeah I have no problems with that I have a problem with them making an Uncharted film because there's no fucking point. <laughs> have you seen the Uncharted film with Nathan Fillion? Oh, the fan one? No, yeah. I haven't. No. <gasps> That's not even really a fan one. That was actually like properly produced. Oh, was it? You have to watch it. It's a bit yeah, it's, 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 it. yeah, it's, it's 15 it's, minutes of just okay. pure fucking joy. It's, it's, it's incredible. I'll check uh, it out. But just got, I was going back to like, you know, characters and how characters can make, make something good. Like, as far as I'm concerned, if Indiana Jones and Harrison Ford was in the film, I'm all in. I'll go see it. No problem. I was just looking at Stranger Things mm-hmm. and I was saying to myself 
if Stranger Things didn't have the good characters it has, it'd be ridiculous. It's like it, the, the the show was made by its characters. Like, you yeah, one hundred percent. And the relationships of the characters is fucking brilliant. And then it let, I was even thinking about this in the car and the way you're picking you up. I was saying to yourself, well, you know what? If the actual premise of Promet the piss and coffee show <laughs> is actually good, but if I had good char- if, if it was if the story and plot was delivered to us by good characters, we, we would definitely have enjoyed yes. it. The characters ruined them fucking films. It's mad how like how, 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 how much a character from fucking a badly written character is can drag a thing down. That's the problem with a lot of shit films. Uh, yeah, you know, yeah, I'm sure. How many like we've <laughs> said about Get Out? Say again, one of my favorite films. Stupid premise, great characters. I'm bad with that piece of shit film. It's fucking great film. <laughs> If you look at something like uh, what was another film we were talking about? It was a stupid premise, great great characters, and it works. That's the other one we're talking about. No, there was another one we were talking about. That doesn't matter. But actually, it's funny because taking one of the characters from Stranger Things, I'm only halfway through season three now. I remember watching the first few episodes of Stranger Things, and your man Hopper. Hop. And I said, this guy is you. The image you. Yeah, and he also acts <laughs> like me. If I, I don't, I don't have that fucking cool short. Though. You have to get a Hawaiian Hawaiian short. If you get a Hawaiian short and grow a beard. Okay. And, and grow your hair a little bit longer and get a sheriff dressed up like a sheriff for Halloween you'd be fucking yeah. hop all day long I could do that Joel will dress up as 11 can you say podcast or an audio medium it's no point in giving the listeners a look like that <laughs> I can mark the look ooh uh, no I was going to say yeah hop starts off the shitty sheriff and you think this guy's a fucking washed out drunken piece of shit and slowly and then quickly evolves into the best fucking cop in the world. Oh, he's class. You know what I mean? By the end of the first class. season, he's just brilliant. Yeah, yeah he is. And he, they just grow on that in the second and third season. They, they, they made him a legendary character in my eyes. But the... Um, uh, I was going to say something that's going to be head. Mark. Joseph. One of your favourite films of all time that's not Star Wars. Of all time? One of, your, one of, one of my favourite films of all time. I want to ask for Dead because yeah. it's impossible. Um, see I kind of I relate my, my favourite movies to kind of when I've seen them who I've seen them with um, so the atmospheres and the feelings and yeah that sort of so I mean right now one of my favourite films of all time um, probably The Goonies oh yeah yeah when I watched their reason yeah, yeah. Chunk, love it truffle shuffle that's <laughs> deadly as it's one of the first films um, that I, I genuinely sat down and bonded with my daughter over them Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, because she just she loved it and it's one of her top movies it's funny yeah. right? it's, when you look back at films like that that you've shared with somebody I, I remember watching Goonies in the kitchen in our old house at my dad and you know the bit where Chunk is going through the uh, uh, I hate nature I hate nature I hate nature he's crawling <laughs> through the bushes but I love ice cream I love ice cream and then he, he waves down the car do you remember yeah, yeah. and he goes around again it's the fucking Vertelli's in the car and he, and, and, and he, the light comes on he sees it and he goes uh, what's he say a book of a talk I found that wife had that one of the funniest scenes I've ever seen in my life it's incredible I remember, um, I remember just laughing heave laughing at that scene and the last time I watched it probably about two years ago so I'm probably due to watch it again but the start of that movie is like surprisingly violent <laughs> Oh, that's the, the jail. Yeah, where he's, he's yeah. supposed to be hanging up the thing and he fucking smashes your man with the, what is it, a wrench or something? I think like they, 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 um, they do an escape then as well, yeah. kind of getting away in the car and mm. just murdering did a whole he, load of people. Did he? Did he? It's like one of those 80s, darker kids' films. Like, yeah. go, like even Ghostbusters is quite oh, it is, yeah, dark. You yeah. know when, when Mouth was uh, 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 translating for the mother? Do you remember the mother was bringing the cleaner around, the Mexican cleaner around the house? And she asked Melt to translate for her. Yeah, yeah. And she's like, this is the drawer, and this is the sock drawer, and this is the whatever drawer. And then Melt is like uh, translating it in Spanish, mm. saying like, you know, this is where all the sex toys go, and this is where <laughs> the <laughs> sex toys go. Back, de- back then, it was more like, it was more of an appreciation of the fact that you actually look after your kid, and you sit there with your kid and watch the film, and make mm. sure that they don't get exposed to any of the stuff they shouldn't be getting exposed to. And nowadays, yeah. it's like all the fucking responsibility is removed from the, the parents and put on the fucking film studio so they censor the shit out of them. But I slightly disagree there. Well, I don't agree with your disagreement. No, because I think that you can see films that are geared towards kids and films that are geared towards adults. It's more, the, it's not the film studios, it's the censors that don't put the PG ratings on it anymore. It's like the 16s no. range, the 18s range. No, no, you will not see a film made like Goonies anymore that has that adult content in it. You simply won't. Uh, I don't know. Name one. I watched Iron Man the other night, which is a kid's film. It's 12s. It's 12s, but it's a kid's it's film. It's not PG. It's aimed towards kids. What, what rating is no, Goonies? The, 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 
PG. Oh, really? It was PG. Oh, right. uh, but but the point I'm making is. Um, like there, there are a number of films like like even E.T. has you know a bit of the guns at the start the films mm. the guns and then fucking Spielberg come under pressure by the fucking Parents Association of America or something to change the guns into CG them into fucking walkie talkies and he did then he got upset about coming under pressure by a fucking Quango and then changed them back to guns again yeah um, um, it's just having that element of, of realism or having that element of uh, of uh, say an adult team in a, in a relative kids film that when adults sit down with their kids to watch, they can appreciate it. The kids don't know what's going on. Like, you, yeah, know, yeah. you don't get that anymore. Because the dark, now in fairness, the ratings do separate it out a bit. Like the 12s will pull all the Marvel stuff into 12s. Um, between PG and 12s, it's all cartoon. It's all Pixar and stuff between PG and 12s. Like, you know, Pixar, show you. Pixar? Love Pixar. <laughs> Shut up, Joe. <laughs> Love Pixar. So, do you want to know what I watched? Oh, did you watch it? I did. I watched loads of stuff. Well, relatively speaking, loads of stuff. I watched, uh, I went to see Spider-Man. Okay, did you go see Spider-Man? I've also seen Spider-Man. It's very good. First yeah, hour. It was kind of excellent. Uh, the first hour? I found no, it kind of dragged. Absolutely loved every minute. And No, don't get me wrong, I enjoyed it, but it's a bright and breezy Marvel film. <laughs> I watched Dumb and Dumber 2, which was atrocious. Uh, which, it wasn't there... Is it the prequel or no? The, the it's the proper sequel. sequel yeah. oh, okay, right, right, right. It's fucking shit. Yeah, because you're not twelve anymore. No, even if it was twelve, I don't think I'd enjoy this. It's shit. It's just really, really bad. Like it's. I don't dumb and dumber was stupid, but this is a whole new level of insulting my intelligence. Stupid. Do you know what I mean? I only left it on because I was pissing herself off. So like, <laughs> <laughs> I'll suffer this, so she has to. Um, hey, Miley's already got really good films to watch there that I lent one, but he won't bother fucking watching them. What I mean? I'm doing another point of principle now. Uh, I watched some of the old studio stuff. Oh, I which watched, ones did you watch? Well, did you, have you watched before? Before have you watched all them? I haven't watched any. Yeah, oh, okay. Well, just just t- did you watch Zygo? No, I had seen Raka already. I watched everything bar that. I watched most of the cooking with Bill or cooking. Oh, they're with, hilarious. Yeah. yeah. And what was the other one? Firebase. I watched Fire, Firebase. Oh, that's all of it. Yeah, it's fucked. Isn't it? uh, it's class. Though. Oh, that's. You really want to see that film? Yeah, don't exactly. You? Yeah, yeah. It's, um, oh, you have to sit down and watch Zoe going now. Zoe's yeah, going to like tits off. It, it, that's the other long ones. I watched all the yeah. short ones. And what's the other one with the, the weapon? Oh, the, the CGI one? Yeah. The testing the weapon. Yeah, it's, it's, pretty, it's pretty It was just cool. stepped into the uncanny valley for me, but uh, it was good. Yeah, it, it did go left to center yeah, big time. It was, it was, it was, uh, it was Yeah. So, yeah, I really enjoyed them. So, I'm going to watch that other one maybe next week. During the week. Maybe it's tomorrow. long. Maybe some of them are it's like 25 minutes, minutes. Yeah. 25 half an hour yeah. it's Firebase something or Firebase Alpha is our what's it called it's just called Firebase, oh, Firebase. Yeah. I think that's a half hour if I'm not mistaken over oh, two parts or three parts that one no it's only one part oh it's one big long yeah, okay, yeah it's one big long but, no, but they're like when you're watching them you go oh, I wish this was two hours long and a full yeah. film and they're good old fashioned sci-fi like, mm. you know? yeah well, if they're not that long I'll, I'll put some time in next week or two and watch them and I'll yep. give you a shout let us know what you come think. Come back at us. Come back at us. Did you watch that this week? Um, I went to see Spider Man. Loved it. Really, really enjoyed it. Um, myself and the missus went to see yesterday during the that week. The Beatles one. It's the Beatles one. Danny Boyle. Yeah. Is it any good? I enjoyed it. Okay. As I, did, I didn't walk out with my whole uh, outlook on life being changed. <laughs> well, it's a two hour movie and it was perfectly harmless. And You're a Beatles fan, aren't you? Yeah. It is. The missus a Beatles fan? Uh, yeah, she will be through her dad and whatnot. So it, so it worked as a Beatles fan, I guess. Oh, definitely, definitely. Um, and they did one thing. I mean, are you guys going to see this movie? But no, you can spoil it for me all day long. So the, the basic premise of the movie being that this guy, bit of a loser, can't get his music career off the road, you know. Gets <coughs> Joe! <it>. <laughs> Resorts <laughs> to podcasting. He did, funnily enough. No, oh, he fuck. no, he didn't. <laughs> He got hit by a bus though, yeah. ah. um, and then he wakes up. Just a little bit and upset. I'm, I mean, but, Joe, I'm only joking. Just a little bit upset. Go on, I mean. Yeah, that's okay. In, internalize, <laughs> internalize. I just, just hold it down mm. and push it as far down, like with the rest of your feelings. Yeah, as far down as you can go. Just like we're stuck. Let them pop out in tumors every now and then. Exactly. And just cut the tumor off, and you're good to go. Perfect. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, he gets hit by a bus. He wakes up and the Beatles don't exist anymore. And throughout the course of the movie, he finds out other things don't exist anymore. Stupid things like cigarettes don't exist anymore. Coke doesn't exist. Everyone's drinking Pepsi. Just stupid shit like that. The Bee Gees. Oasis Pearl doesn't Jam. exist anymore. <laughs> um, but the thing I really liked that it did, at the end of the movie, it he doesn't wake up in the middle of the road going, oh, it was a dream. 
it just that is just the world now. The Beatles don't exist anymore. No way. And so there's like, a storyline behind it. I thought it was it's yeah, it's not like a Beatles a, documentary. No, 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 it's actually oh, okay, a story. Well, but the fact they just left it and said, No, that's that's reality now, I was like, eh. A loop. Cool. Yeah. The after credit scene is I can respect that. Cool. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, um, I've watched one other thing, sorry, oh, well. that I don't know. You we talked about this a while ago, but I don't know if you've watched it yet. Warrior? Have you watched oh, Warrior yet? Joel Wait. Edgerton. Um, oh no, that's no. Your t- oh, it's Warrior, a TV series. It's a TV series yeah. based on the Bruce Lee idea. Oh, oh, yeah, that you was watched it, did you? I've watched the first three episodes. Wait, where's that out? It's on Sky. <laughs> and what's it like? Um, so the first episode, I was watching it, and I was like, "This is shit." I really am not enjoying this. What is this trying to be? And then about thirty minutes in, I realized because I'm used to like you're used to like premium TV, like HBO shows and, and mm. The Wire and. This is out now just a throwback to the old exploitation movies. Everything in it, every last second word out of their mouths is swearing and cursing, and it's just real, like, super racist. <laughs> well, well that, that was the whole thing. Woo, it was racism. Bruce, yeah. What's Bruce Lee's idea? It is yeah. set, like, back in the 1890s. Yeah, in yeah. San Francisco. And yeah, so. and, and, and the, the China man comes along into the yeah. in, into this world, That's and it. they treat him like shit, and he's fucking... Once I kind of, like... Figured out can what I, it was. Can yeah. I ask you a quick question? Yeah. Is Bruce Lee credited in the credits? Yes. Ah. Uh, once I kind of realised what kind of show it was, I was like, this is actually brilliant. I'm really enjoying this. Fuck, I didn't know There's a few there. fight scenes. There's one fight scene where they're in an alley and there's, you know, two kind of gangs going up against each other and one guy gets like, you know, hatchet man. Takes out a hatchet, hits some guy in the face, whole side of his face cuts open. Holy shit. And I was like... Yeah. <laughs> I mean. this is brilliant yeah. so what's going to happen is you have this the main character can just kick the shit out of anybody and he's real lazy and real cocky about it and that, that's fine but there's it's almost like the Simpsons episode you have the guy in the white suit <gasps> there waiting to see what he's going to do there's one guy he had a little fight with the fight lasted about two or three minutes and they were pretty evenly matched and you know they're going to fight again and you know he's going, the main character is going to get absolutely battered <laughs> So I'm really looking forward to watching Class. more of it. Yeah, it sounds great. How many episodes? There's 10 altogether. Oh, man. I've perfect. Been, I, I, and I, I, and they're perfect. doing a second definitely season. spoke about it already, because I remember chatting yeah. about it. Uh, we spoke about it on this. Yeah, uh, I was getting excited about it. I actually no, meant exactly. to say to you that I saw an ad for it. But ah. Then I forgot. <laughs> 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 then I meant to watch it, and I just didn't. Um, they're doing a second season as well. Class. Class. To stick with martial arts for a minute, I've been buying up a couple of the 88 films, uh, old... Jackie Chan movies they're bringing out Dragons mm-hmm. Forever Crime Story and another one later on in the year but they brought out um, Snake and Crane Arts of Shaolin which is excellent the Blu-ray very into that as class as well uh, the real breakout like of, of it's not you know the, the real change from the, the stupid Chopasaki fucking to the actual fluid fighting that Bruce Lee brought in like you know pull the camera back let, let's see the fight and all that sort of stuff some great fight scenes in it. Um, uh, uh, but I also got The Kill with Intrigue did you ever hear this film? No. Never heard of it. Sounds okay. like a fucking sexy French film or something. Kill with Intrigue. <laughs> uh, the mo- I watched it the other night and it's one of the most fucked up films I've ever watched in terms of... It, it's it, you can't. It's almost indecipherable. Yeah. I'm going to try and go through it real quickly. So it starts off with uh, Jackie Chan. Come, it's an 18s film. So it's a serious film. Well, it's a crazy film. Coming back to his, like, his parents' like estate. And... Um, there's a gang out to get his father's ward in the street that there's this gang the the, the bumblebee something or other gang are coming to get that yeah, uh, sounds super fucking hard oh I mean, what was some, <laughs> some, some, some lad shows up in the middle of their courtyard with a fucking knife stuck in his back and it's like an actual terrible symbol like of, of a maul of bumblebee mm. on the knife that's so so the father's like oh it tells him a story well back when I was younger we had a fucking shindig with these lads and they told me that they'd let me live for another 20 years and then they were going to hunt me down so they they Basically, they, they come in. There's a, the leader of the gang is a female. They fucking fly down out of the sky. They fucking batter all, Jackie's brothers and the, the family and everything else. And then she kills the mother and the father, right? The leader of this bumblebee gang. <laughs> Jackie, in, in, sorry, in between this happening, Jackie has gotten wind that his family are going to be slaughtered. So he pretends to hate his wife or his girlfriend who's pregnant to force her to run away so she fucking runs away and then Jackie goes back and the, the gang come in they kill the man dad they batter Jackie Jackie wakes up anyway the next day and you're one the leader of the gang who just slaughtered his man dad in front of him is like uh, uh, I'm, I'm gonna let you live 
I'm gonna let you suffer because you're gonna know what it's like for me when your father killed my mother and father and done this and she has a big scar on her face, done this to me when I was younger, you're gonna know what it's like and I know why your girlfriend's gone and fucking, but I'm not gonna tell you. So Jackie's like, fuck you and runs off looking for the girlfriend, right? Can't fight her because she's too good, she fucking keeps battling her. Uh, he runs off looking for the girlfriend. The girlfriend ends up stumbling then into like some place and these these like like louts come over, they have a go at her and they're trying to pull her dress off and this other fella who looks like Jackie jumps down off a pillar, batters the three fellas, saves your one, brings her off to a house that he owns, and then they shag off then because he has to go and do something which is never specified. Then Jackie comes along and he's still looking for her and he's kind of following the trail and he ends up in that house that they were in. And then out of the blue, there's other gang, the, the, the four brothers or something come along. The golden unicorns. Oh, it's, it's mad. <laughs> the, the four brothers, the four brothers come along and they're like, they're after sending these hitmen in to try and kill the guy who was Jackie's friend who took his girlfriend and shagged off. But instead they think Jackie's the young man, they fight Jackie, Jackie kills two of them and kills one of them. And the other two are outside and the leader of the four brothers says, no, you're not going to kill this man pointing to Jackie, he's going to live. So, then what happens is, uh, uh, they these hitmen are part of this other gang called the fucking something something gang. I can't even remember the name of them. But we're you're, we're not going to let you away with this. You have to kill them one of our own. We have to we have to lift up people by the legs, skin them, and do something with them, and burn them, or cook them, or something. I don't know if they kill one of our own. But you're not letting us do that. So we're going to get the master after you. So then your man gets Jackie up, and Jackie decides to join that gang as the fifth brother. Then your one shows up then and admits, the one who's at her slot and Jackie's family admits that she's fallen in love with Jackie and wants Oi. Jackie to go off a whore and Jackie won't because he wants to find your one. But then your one, the fella that your one dragged off turns out to be the leader of the gang of the hitmen who now wants to get the four brother gang and take out the four, which is now the five brother gang because Jackie's there and sends all his hitmen, they jump down out of fucking trees and they come down on fucking lightning bolts and shit and they have a big fight. And what happens then? Jackie gets stabbed, but he survives because your one comes along and takes him away. Your one who killed his mother and father takes him away. And then tells him everything then. She, she nurses him back to health because she loves him. And tells him everything then about where his wife is gone and that the fact that the fella who was Jackie's friend took his wife wants to marry her now. And he's the leader of the hitman, the hit squad gang. And uh, Jackie decides, no way, I have to go and fight her. But she says, you're not, I have to go and fight your man, but you're not strong enough, she says. So she starts fucking fighting Jackie to train him up. She keeps battering Jackie. And every time Jackie fails, she does something fucking horrible to him. On one, one occasion, she fucking, Jackie fails and she heats up a fucking, like a brand. And brands his face, his whole face is burnt. Like, you know, it's bad shit Good going on. So until eventually then Jackie fucking learns enough to, to be her and goes off. And then finally finds your man and has like this hour long fight with your man. It's not an hour, it feels like an hour. In which case he keeps stripping him. And then it turns out then that his head is his uh, weak spot. So he tries to get out of his head, but for the next 20 minutes doesn't get anywhere near his head and your man just keeps battering Jackie. And then what happens? Or your one shows up with a bazooka and blows him up with a bazooka. <laughs> no, that didn't happen. But I would have been killed if that happened. <laughs> but Jackie beats him, but he doesn't beat him by using his head. Like, there was a whole plot point about the head. It was just fucking one of the most fucked up films I've ever seen. It sounds like Coronation Street where everyone's just hanging around the trees and shit and jumping down and beating the shit out of each other. Yeah, it was terrible. It doesn't sound needlessly complicated. Is it about... Yeah. Seven hours long. That, that's like a it. lot of information. It felt like for it. a movie. But then, see, that's, that's, uh, I looked up and it's directed by Low Way. Did you ever hear Low Way? He directed Big Boss. Remember Big Boss? Oh, he did the Bruce, Bruce Lee, Lee from yeah, Big yeah. Boss. And Bruce Lee didn't like him. The two of them didn't get on at all. Bruce was pretty much the director of all the fight scenes and shit. Uh, yeah. But your man Low Way, this shit he directed. Like there's, there's loads of scenes of Big Boss that were shit. That they were really poorly filmed and you know silly stuff like um, um, but like the. The Bruce Lee scenes where Bruce was actually fucking doing the fight scenes and stuff were excellent. And I was watching this going, but I looked it up then. Jackie said that was the worst film he ever acted on. They went down to Korea in the winter and they were all fucking freezing. And then Jackie and Lil Wei had big arguments about how it should be filmed and how it should be shot and how the choreography should be and all that sort of shit. Um, and it all went to shit, like, you know, that's why there's, there's different aspects of different plot lines coming in because Jackie was doing his own plot line, your man Lil Wei was doing his plot line, and when they edited it together, it was just a big fucking mess. But it's called to kill or intrigue. It's so intriguing when you're watching. You're going, like, how could they have made this this fucking crazy? Yeah. But then when it's over, you're dead because your brain can't comprehend. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I was actually confused yeah. when you were telling me about it. Damn, it's mad. It's uh, actually mad. So give it a rating. Uh, Seven. 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 Seven.
Six Joes, one Derek, half a Mark. Ooh, tasty. So, Mark, who's your favourite casting director? Um, it's Tim Jeffries. Tim actually. Jeffries. Yeah. 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 And what was the film he uh, is more known for casting? Uh, to Kill with Intrigue. Oh, <laughs> Tim yeah. Jeffries. Uh, also I, did. I assume that was an anglicised name for a Chinese casting. He was actually he was adopted by an American family. Ah, okay. Um, but their roots weren't from America. They're actually from England. They came over, you know, decades ago, whatever it was. Yeah. Um, he also did, did To Kill a Mockingbird and Time to Kill. He had a, a track record. It's a very specific skill set. <laughs> <in terms of, laughs> a very particular <laughs> kill set. <laughs> <laughs> What's your feeling on geriatric films? Geri action films are. Geri action films. Ne- Taken and fucking. Liam Neeson, basically. Oh, like Neeson his whole catalogue, basically. Yeah. Well, well, no, since he became an elf. Yeah. yeah. Since films. Taken. He's always been an elf, really, isn't he? He was born, like, in his 50s. He was, yeah. yeah. But, like, Wilfred Brimley. Um, I don't watch them. <laughs> no, 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 no. Get out. I, I watched well, Taken. Them, whatever, I watched Taken. Really enjoyed it. Really good movie. Watched Taken 2. I was like, that's a bit shit. That's shit. Yeah, I watched no. um, Taken 2 and Taken 3. Shit. Seen they were doing Taken 3. And I went, no, that's okay, thanks. Yeah. And then he did like Taken on a plane. And then Taken on a train. Yeah. And I was just stopped making the same movie. Taken on a spaceship. Oh, that'd be cool, yeah. Oh, yeah. Liam Neeson cool. in space. That's what you call it. Liam Neeson in space. I'd go see that though. Get off me fucking space station, you bastard. But another film I watched. Yeah. I bought a bunch of Arrow films. They recently got Demons 1, Demons 2, Runaway Train. Did you ever see Runaway Train? No, you're telling me about it. I seen um, did you ever see that one? Eric Roberts and John Voigt. No. Two convicts and they trying to get away and they escape and they're trying to get away in a train. And no. it's Runaway Train. It's it's class. Um, what else did I get? Uh, Blade of the Immortal and uh, Defcon f- is it Defcon 5 yeah Defcon 5 so I rewatched Defcon 5 just to see what it was like and uh, it's as crazy as I remember it's a mad film but it's fun um, but I certainly wouldn't be out recommending it though because it's one of them kind of like you had to be in the right moment I think to watch it when you were younger like you know to appreciate it now which is the film that has a dog having a flashback Oh, jeez, that's fucking The Hills of Boys 2. Is it in the post credit scene? Because that would be the worst thing ever. No, it's in the film. It's a plot point in the film. The dog <laughs> from the first one has a flashback what? to what happened in the first one. Like, is that the whole film? Like, well, well, Is the well, dog having a flashback? Yeah, that's it. The dog, yeah, it starts with the dog. Yeah. which is a flashback. And that's then, the whole film. Uh, it ends with the dog then. Go on. Finish with the flashback. <laughs> No, it does actually. It's 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 mad. Like, it, no, it, it's getting a fucking super duper special edition treatment from Arrow Films. Like, what and I appreciate that Arrow do that because there are fans of the film. Yeah, but, but like, it's, it's just still a shit film. Let's have a look at the old cost benefit analysis on that. There. I mean, How many Arrow, is- Arrow are still going? Arrow will not will definitely make money over. They're not. They're not dopes. But I watched the Blu-ray version of uh, of Demons. Did you ever see Demons? No. No. Oh wait, this is the plot point for Demons. They hand out cinema tickets for this cinema. Uh, for this film that hasn't been seen yet a bunch of people go to this film there's a mask there somebody puts a mask on turns into a demon turns other people into a demon some bloke in the world trying to kill the demons that's it oh, nice. and it's fucking glorious it is. it's <laughs> fucking class it's gory it's fucking off the charts it has like Billy Oil and all in the, in the, what you oh, call yeah. it, the, the, the soundtrack yeah. oh, I thought you were going to was actually in it that's a bit I wasn't great it was in it but it's, an, it's a purely uh, Italian, like, you know, uh, uh, film from the, the, stock of, the stock of schlocky 80s, yeah. 70s and 80s Italian movies. But it's class. So I watched that, and the, the, Blu-ray, uh, the Blu-ray upgrade of it from Arrow was fucking stunning, so it was. It was really, really good. You don't know how many people are buying those, you know, the Hills of Ice 2 and stuff like that. I mean, how there much... There are loads of them. Yeah, but I know. Like, do people actually enjoy but those? But think of it this way. Arrow have really got into the mark of, for collectors. Yeah. So when you buy something, it's... <clears throat> So you'll have people out there, you have a bunch of people who like the film, first off, yeah. who want to buy it. You have a bunch of people who hate the film, but as film enthusiasts and completionists wants to get it, delve into it, look into all the special features and all this mm. shit, and have the best representation of that film they can have in their collection, so if they ever want to go back to it, they can. Even if um, it's shit. And, and, and then you'll have people who just like collecting Arrow film stuff, so yeah. one way or the other, they will absolutely make their money on it. Like, you know, there's no I don't doubt that, but I'm just wondering what drives their thought process behind you go right with the hills have eyes too that's the next one we'll do our chances are it would be availability of reels and access to to um, vaults and stuff like that yeah but do they do things like you know that film um, Manos the Hands of Fate we'll say that's out on Blu-ray now I think 
It is, yeah. It's free on YouTube. I know. It's, there's no like, there's no what you call it. Uh, it should be copyright or whatever. Whatever. It should it be is. born in the bucket. Oh, yes, it's shit. No. Manos the hands give of fate. him the fucking rundown of Manos the Hands of Fate. Manos the Hands of Fate starts with a family going on vacation with a smooth jazz music behind it. Okay. And then I think they arrive somewhere and some guy tells him that he's the gatekeeper. And oh, like, I don't know. All, I, sorts, I all, that film from your brain. all sorts of shit happens. It just makes no fucking sense. And it was made by some fertilizer salesman in El Paso, Texas for like $50 or something. And it's good to have hobbies. And it, <laughs> oh, Jesus. But it looks like it was made for 50 We could literally months, take though. one of our phones and record a better film right now out in my back garden. Yeah, we could, yeah. If I cut the grass, which I'm not going to do. So it's not going to You were going to supposed to do that last week and you didn't do it though. I don't have a lawnmower. Yeah. Somebody ran over the lead. And that's that's why you don't have a lawnmower now because somebody ran over your lead. Yeah. One of your favourite actors, Mark. Oh, God. Um. One of my favourite actors. God, I'm actually drawing a blank on that. At least he didn't ask what a fucking yeah. actor was. Which one of yours one that you haven't mentioned yet? <laughs> that I haven't mentioned yet. Ah, oh, I'd say currently Joel Edgerton. Wait, why, why are you on the Joel Edgerton boys at the minute? Because I saw that film The Gift and it just fucking blew my mind. I loved it. The Gift? The Gift, yeah. He directed it as well. Are you set? You're talking about this? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did I mention him already? Yeah. I'll have to go for someone else, so. Uh, well, you didn't mention it was one of your favourites, though. Just at the moment. Yeah. God, even after seeing that piece of fucking shit. What's it called? It's the night time or some fucking show, whatever. It comes at night. comes at night, yeah. Some fucking crap. He was brilliant in Warrior. He was brilliant in The Thing, uh, the prequel. What else is he in? That's good. He's very good in The Thing prequel, actually. Yeah. He's a really good act- character in that. He's also... The helicopter pilot, remember him? Mm. You've seen The Thing prequel, haven't you? Um, no. Because you were supposed to give it to me on Blu-ray about four years ago. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> and now it's out on the internet. Okay, well, well, do well don't give that in the way about the Thing prequel because... I, like, oh, it's great. You know, Brian actually mentioned that we should actually sit down and watch the Thing pre- prequel and then watch the Thing like, in the night. I'm all over it. I'd be watch really one after the other, yeah. I was like, oh, I'm a huge Thing prequel fan and that gets way too much hate. Yeah, I don't, like, I I don't, don't understand, understand this. I understand that there is a bit of whinge about some of the effects or CGI. But um, but, but it, it's it's still fucking brilliant. There's still great uh, practical effects in it. I mean, the thing prequel is a movie I always meant to buy on Blu-ray. I always remember having it in my hands, and it's a very similar story to what Brian told us, which is I didn't buy it because it was a double pack with the original. Oh thing. yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. And I already had that. I was like, I don't want it twice. Yeah. And and that was wrong. I should have just bought it. This is like the time I accidentally bought uh, the remake of Nightmare on Elm Street. I bought. Oh, you poor man! No, yeah. I bought it online, but it came in a double pack. I didn't realize <laughs> it was it was years ago. CD Web or one of them. I remember they were kind of a bit ropey for showing you what the actual box looked like. I don't know if you remember that. You sometimes it didn't have a picture, so I ordered what I thought it was a Nightmare on Elm Street, and it turns out it was the two of them. Yeah, you got two for one. Yeah, but I really shit. Actually, tried to do it so much, you only got half a film. Yeah, and I ended up watching. It. I was like, oh, oh. yeah, that's poor. Midnight Special. That's another good film he's in. Oh yeah, he's the, the father in that. Yeah. yeah. Apart from the very end of that, I love that film. Don't don't get back away with that one though. Don't get back away with no, that. No, I'm just looking through his uh, warrior. It's good in that. He was a uh, young Uncle Owen. Yeah. Yeah. He was. I, I've seen him in a few movies. He's, he's good. He's he's good. I I go with um, a favorite actor that I haven't mentioned yet, Robert Redford. Oh yeah. Robert, Robert Redford. Redford yeah. yeah. And one of my favorite films that I inherited my love of this film from my dad was uh, the Hot Rock. Is it Hot Rock? No, no, don't know that one. It's a heist film. And Zero Mostella's in it, and uh, it's it's just really funny. But there's there's there, there's one thing I'll never forget from it. There's a they they hypnotise one of the 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 security guards for the bank, um, and they have a code or code phrase for him. So when they quote the code phrase, they he'll just do anything that they ask him to do, and the code phrase is uh, Afghanistan banana stand. <laughs> so he'll never ever forget that. Like, you know, Robert Redford's in every class. Uh, Robert Redford's great. Even when he showed up in uh, like Captain America, The Winter Soldier, I was like, yeah, oh, yeah, it's yeah. brilliant. But he's a baddie, though. I was like, ah, Robert Redford's not a baddie. Yeah, but I think that's... They're just not typecast. And what's the opposite? I, I, inverting expectations. Oh, yeah, yeah. You know yeah, I, mean? I suppose, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah Look yeah. at, uh, what's his name? Henry Fonda in... What's that? Uh, I haven't seen it in years. Yeah. But it was... 
mm. super fucking bad in that and, and him being a goodie for so long exactly he's yeah. one of the most horriblest baddies ever even you watch I have to watch that film again actually yeah so do I I haven't seen it in jeez I'd say fucking 10-15 years now but I love uh, 12 Angry Men with him in it oh yeah I've seen, seen that yeah, fucking yeah, class. brilliant yeah, yeah. again like we were talking about good characters there's nothing else in that but the characters you don't even know their fucking name right, it's literally mm-hmm. one room yeah it's literally just people talking for whatever an hour yeah, and a half yeah but um have you thought of an actor yet um no <laughs> and I, right. I've genuinely tried and I don't know that I necessarily even have a favourite actor but there's people that, that pop up in movies yeah. that as soon as I see them I'm like yes I'm going to yeah. enjoy this more because this person is yeah. in it uh, one thing that popped immediately into my head when you used to talk about favourite actors was um, Clancy Brown. Oh, yeah, the character. Yeah. yeah. Every time yeah. I like, just hear his voice. Yeah. Because he does a lot of like just voiceover stuff these days. But yeah. I see him in something, I love it. Oh, he, he's he? uh, Starship Troopers. He's the... The Drill Sergeant. Drill Sergeant. Ah, Starship yes. Troopers, yeah, yeah. 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 He's class. He's, he's a Kurgan in yeah. Highlander. Uh, the the <laughs> enemy <laughs> cannot... What was it? The enemy cannot launch a nuke if you disable his hand! <laughs> He's in the he's in Stranger Things three as well. Uh, Jake Busey. Yeah, actually, yeah, true yeah. enough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's also in the Predator. Boo! <laughs> what are your feelings in the Predator? He, huh? he loves the Predator. I love the Predator. Oh, oh fair man. Oh, oh. But do you know uh, Gary Busey? Jake Busey, sorry, plays Gary, Gary Busey's, Busey's son. son. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I thought that was going to be a bigger plot point actually. Yeah. So did I. How much fun did we have? As watching? well as the rest of the fucking plot, like the Predator. I, I wouldn't. When I seen The Predator, I couldn't remember a time I had so much fun in the cinema yeah, watching same. a movie. You just uh, fucking I laughed was, all the way through. Uh, laughed at it though. No, no definitely no, with it, like pure it enjoyment. It definitely has. It, it definitely is massive tongue in cheek. That whole film. Like your man blowing his head off at the Predator going at the end. Like it's just fucking. And then the, the, the lift is going down. Ooh, are we? Is the walls moving? Are we going down? And, over? and your man's like, oh, every time. It's like, a fucking Predator film. Yeah, and you're one shooting herself with the foot and paralyzed herself and he's like come on jump 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 and fucking shit's coming twice he's like, oh, fuck it. he runs off and she jumps and flaps down like, so many great scenes Does, the only great you're scene you're outnumbered now I know for the first time in my life ever and it's just it's localised in this room Wait, he's hit and miss <gasps> Ooh, what's miss in Tarantino for you although I, I'm not a big fan of Death Proof but what's, hit, what's Death miss proof? for you I like Death Proof oh there you go yeah I was a big fan of that Um. Planet Terror wasn't necessarily that was Planet, that was it wasn't him though it was Robert um, Rodriguez. Rodriguez and I love Planet Terror fucking yeah, Michael Bean is in Planet <laughs> Terror and he's in the coolest <laughs> sheriffs ever and friend of the show friend of the show Mick Bean yeah. yeah good mates of ours best besties no were you there don't you um, no you didn't you go see aliens that night I mean probably not <laughs> go on anyway Oh, that was it. Just not a massive fan of Quentin Tarantino. Um, but no, I'm ex- it was out I, I am excited to see what he might do with Star Trek. That would be cool. Um, but what, what what film? Like, cause he only has nine films. Wait, like, only he has nine films. But what film would you not like in his in his category? I need to get my phone out. Here we go. No, 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 no. I know we're, we're okay with taking our phones. Not too many of them because they go on the fucking mics. In the meanwhile, Eric. Yeah. One of your favourite female actors. Uh, it's Connie Weaver. Yeah, well, she's up there, alright. No, who else is there? I like your one. Um, I don't know her name. She's in Black Panther and she's in Us. Oh. oh I can't remember her fucking name. Hang on, I get it now. Is that the? It, 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 which Lupita one is she in Black Nyong'o. Panther? Is she? Is she the the, the, the like the scientisty one in Black Panther? Is it? No, no she's the head of the guard. Is it the, Shaved head. No, she's the girlfriend or the prospective yes, girlfriend. Yes, okay, I know you're talking about. Yeah, she's in um, the prospective girlfriend. She's in us. She's in Black Panther. She's in Star Wars. She's Maz Kanata in Star Wars. Oh, that's right, yeah. Yeah, yeah now I know her now. Yeah. yeah. So just a couple of things. There are just a few things I've seen her in. Uh, she's in Jungle Book, which I actually quite enjoyed. There you go. All right, let me look here. Did you ever see the Quentin Tarantino CSI film? No. He directed an actual film from the CSI. Oh yeah? Is it like part I know, of the... I don't know which CSI one it is, but it's a full on hour and a half long board of a film and it's one of them get buried and they have to try and find them and it's really, really good. Uh, Alright, so going through IMDb here, uh, just some of the ones that jumped out at me. Um, Pulp Fiction. You didn't like Pulp Fiction? I liked it when I was younger. 
And like when I rewatched it when I got a bit older, it just didn't have be, the same. Is it because it's, it's so ingrained in fucking uh, uh, pop culture now? Is it that it's, it's become like no, a it's to do that. Scarface um, kind of scenario? I, the pop culture thing wouldn't affect me. I just think when I was younger, it was a different person and I enjoyed it. But looking back, I'm like, did I enjoy it or did I, did I enjoy it because everybody else loved it so much? Ah, I see. You know, I remember um, watching it and enjoying it. I love Reservoir Dogs, right? I fucking love Reservoir Dogs. I find Pulp Fiction self indulgent. No, I it love is, Pulp Fiction. And it's class. like it was like it was written to be studied by people. It was like what? I'm gonna make a film now that people will study forever because I'm gonna throw different timelines around the place. No, I'm gonna put in no. you know this conversations that disagree shouldn't happen. You know, like not the way we. He sat down to make a film. A modern take on some of the seventies gritty films that he loved watching, that he fell in love with, uh, and he done a modern take because there's loads of films that back in the seventies that kind of follow that kind of uh, flick back and forward with different plot lines going on, kind of structure, and he just did it himself mm. with this, the the dialogue he would like to see in a film like that, with the action and the kind of grittiness that he'd like to see in a film like that, and he put it in. You see, I don't. You might call it indulgent in that he went and made the film that he wanted to see, but it turns out a lot of other people wanted to see it too. Yeah, but it's like that Dublin Old School that we were talking about oh, last no, no, week. No, 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 it's not like that. No, 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 hang on, Fuck hang on, me. no, no, no. The self indulgent nonsense that started at swimming against the tide and all this shit, that's not the way real people speak. And Pulp Fiction is exactly the fucking same. There are things that happen in Pulp Fiction that are brilliant, like your woman getting the adrenaline shot after she overdoses on the heroin. Yeah. That whole scene is brilliant. But then the conversation at the fucking dinner table before they start to dance is fucking, like, it's so self-indulgent. That's not the way people interact with each other. Do you know? Kev Shields said about Jim Quentin Tarantino. That I'm fucking right. It's not an opinion. You're just <laughs> fucking wrong. I'm looking through his... Go on. To, hold on. Max, 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 sorry. Uh, four Rooms. No, hey, that's Kev. <laughs> hated that movie. Yeah. Hated that something fierce. Um, Fuck, what was with Tim Roth in that? The whole film. <laughs> <laughs> okay, man. Do you know this? What's all this show? You kept doing the whole fucking film. I'm moving my hands around for anybody who's listening. Yeah, you know, he hasn't done as many movies as I actually thought he had. Um, for Jackie Brown, I enjoyed. Jackie Brown's good. Kill Bill, I enjoyed. Jackie Brown, yeah. I like both Kill Bill. Um, Kill Bill was a bit blowed. No, it wasn't. Mm. I think Kill Bill Two towards Kill Bill Two towards the end gets a little bit bloated but it's still taken as a whole. I love the two of them. Um, Glorious Bastards I loved yeah Daddy. Django Unchained I enjoyed yeah that was cool this was enjoyed. I, really liked it. I haven't seen The Hateful Eight yet Hateful Eight um, is amazing and I'm really looking forward to seeing Once Upon a Time in Hollywood so am I so you didn't hate right. as much as that you see I, I, I maybe it's just him as a person that's fair enough I'm going to go through mine I like Jackie Brown Kill Bill 1 and 2 were blowed uh, they're alright Death Proof was shit the Glorious Bastards I enjoyed Django was too long and self indulgent and the hateful hey, piss me off something fucking fierce. What? Yeah. It's it's eight people talking in a room, like not like real people fucking talk, and then it's a fucking flashback. People still don't talk like real people talk. <laughs> what do you think th- there's nothing wrong with the dialogue in Hateful Eight. It's brilliant dialogue. The end of it is good. I really the whole enjoy- fucking no, film I is really brilliant. enjoyed the end of it. And what you're forgetting is there's one character who's speaking a particular way because he's trying to be a particular way for a particular part of the plot. No, but it's just. Oh, I know, I know. No, I have no. to try and search for other reasons why I hey, don't like it because I need no. to justify my position. And they're all too fuck fucking off. long. Fuck off, will you? Stop trying to undermine me by doing impressions of me, child. <laughs> it doesn't work. It doesn't work. One of your favourite scenes of all time? Uh, one of my favourite scenes of all time. I'm repeating what you said to buy myself a second, what I think. But now I've just trapped myself in a loop where I'm thinking about talking more than I'm thinking about the scene. <laughs> um, one of my favourite scenes of all time was probably the original Superman movie. The first Christopher Reeve one? The first Christopher Reeve movie. Which, what's the scene? Um, just the first scene where Superman is revealed and he oh, right, catches the helicopter. Right. Um, and it just sticks in my head because it was only on there about three or four days ago. I just happened to catch the start of it. I was in the middle of doing loads of things sat down I was like right I have to watch this now it's just on and I have to watch it um, and yet just uh, yeah because that kind of goes hand in hand with my favourite pieces of music as well though is the Superman team the oh yes, yeah, team. yeah yeah yeah, yeah it's class. Um, it's, it's, so, so those two things together just always just have an effect on me um, even to the point where again my kid was sitting there beside me and I was I was kind of trying to 
almost talk her out of just watching this movie. I was like, yeah. oh, you go off, do whatever you're doing, because this is an old movie. You probably won't think it looks that great. Yeah. You know, and she sat there for the whole thing. She's like, this, this is brilliant. That's nah, like, good stuff. Yes. That's a good adventure <laughs> film. It's a really good adventure film. Um, I haven't seen that in years. No, same here. Yeah, I haven't seen the second one. Uh, the is Richard Donner was the original director. Am I correct in saying that? Yeah, yeah. the yeah. second one is a bit messed up, isn't it? The second one's a bit messed up because they made Superman 1 and 2 as one movie. Mm. And then, as far as I remember, there was something happened in the production of the second one. They were cutting it together and another director came in took over and changed some of the stuff around. So some of it's a bit of a mess. Yeah. Right. And then the stuff that was done by Richard Donner and that whole crew is brilliant. So it is like it's two slightly different movies trying to happen at the same time. I remember seeing it years ago. I'm not enjoying it as much, but I know they released another cut of it. Where they restored some of Richard Donner's original. Yeah, they literally just call it the Donner Cut. I've, I've on DVD in a box set at home. Any use? Uh, yeah, that's great. The Donner Kebab Cut. Donner Kebab. Oh man, I'm more than that. <laughs> I'm fucking a Milla Kebab right now. <laughs> I don't think there's a moment today where I won't Milla Kebab. One of your favourite sci fi movies of all time is not Star Wars or Star Trek. <laughs> oh, well, that's or a Star Stargate. <laughs> <laughs> no Stargate. <There's> no. <laughs> um. Aliens. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yes. Can't argue with that. Now, here, here's the next question. Theatrical record, director's cut. Um, director's cut. Yeah, all day long. All day long, man. Director's cut of Aliens. Yeah. yeah. I have seen it. What's different again? Well, um, I, there's a lot of stuff at the start, all the Hadley's Hope stuff. I get that the theatrical cut is a tighter movie. Yeah. Oh, it is. It is. Yeah. But yeah. this yeah, one expands on the lower yeah. and the yeah. lower. Yeah. yeah. I, yeah. And I, enjoy, I just enjoy it so much yeah. more. It's actually, it, it is actually, the, it's like the, the theatrical cut was the perfect gateway. And then, and I'll never forget the excite, how excited my dad was. I, I, the, the day I ran home from school because my dad told me he was going out to buy the special edition VHS of Aliens. First of all, it had proper Prologic set, soundtrack on it. And he was telling me I had an extra 10 minutes of it. And I remember yeah. your man giving out to him because he was going to the boy. <laughs> Did I tell you the story? No. He was going to the boy like the a- aliens again. And my man was like, why do you want to go? Over? It's only 10 minutes. It's only 10 minutes of additional footage. Or whatever the additional footage time is. But my dad says, here, look at your watch. And she looks at me and watches. Now, just keep staring at your watch for a minute. She goes, no, I'll get bored. Says, well, imagine the amount of aliens have been shot in a minute. We're going to wrap up 10 minutes. I, I've right. seen aliens with my dad. Uh, and I was entirely too young to watch it. And I'm I, back then. I'm back and then I wasn't really. Ex- he was 25. I was. <laughs> yeah. This was about two weeks ago, actually. Yeah. I was just. I was. I hadn't really seen a lot of sci fi and definitely hadn't seen a lot of horror at that point. And I was sitting on the couch beside my dad. And I remember getting so scared. Yes. Yeah, I actually outside. climbed over him <laughs> around the other Ooh. side to get away from the TV. Yeah. To the point where, for about five years after I seen that, I wouldn't watch it again. I was terrified to watch it, yeah. but all my friends knew I had it on video, yeah. and they all just wanted to come around and watch it all the time, and I would Gosh. never ever put it on. I was so scared, so we would just watch Top Gun all the time. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> one of the worst fucking films ever made. Go on, it, 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 excuse that in a me. <laughs> but, uh, excuse me. Eventually, I just was like, yeah, fuck, just put on fucking Aliens, Grant. I put it in and I sat there and all my mates were terrified and I sat there and watched it and said, this is the greatest movie I've ever seen yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's so good it's I, such a it was another movie. one of my channel for late night viewings it was on TV like oh, when you first saw it when I first saw it again I was probably too young to be watching it but then I remember watching it and someone had told me I said oh, I've seen this film called Aliens you know I was Alien or Aliens I said like, what the fuck there's another one <laughs> you know? days before the internet and all that shit yeah, yeah, you know yeah. what I mean no, don't no, fuck a podcast there to inform our views. <laughs> but uh, I watched it with Rhino. Oh yeah, the young lad, and the bit that he like he fucking loved that he was like he was so fucking tight in the couch <laughs> he could have turned into a fucking black hole like right there like you know he was that he was that tense. But it was great to see because he was sitting beside me, he was really tense watching. Oh, I was getting tense with him, getting tense watching it, and he was loving it. But like there's no like there there is violence, but the violence is all against. The only real scene I was worried about him seeing was the chess portion scene. Yeah. Because that's really kind of oh, it's grisly. So I covered his eyes at that scene. But everything else was gold, like you know. But the bit where um, you know when they're retreating back to the APC, mm-hmm. or even the bit where fucking 
Ripley just takes charge and you hear the mute and she smashes through the fucking walls and everything with the APC and she gets in and they're fucking retreating back to the door and Hudson's in the last one they get in is Drake and he has the fucking smart one and he, one of the aliens goes, and like for a split second you see a scene where you just see an, an alien just disintegrating the bits yeah. he runs away and goes, oh daddy did you see that <laughs> he was so fucking excited then they get back in and Drake gets fucking splashed with the acid and he's screaming and they fucking trying to close the door and the alien puts his head in and then fucking hits the coolest scene ever whips out the shotgun eat this and Roy was like daddy did you see that it's like it was two massive big out, out, outlets of fucking nerves and energy, like, you know, and in, 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 in basically in one amazing action scene. I do want to watch it again, and soon. I seen it, I caught about 10 minutes of it on Sky Movies there about a month ago. Yeah. And just, I was flicking through channels, there it was, I was like, oh, I'll watch this for it. too far in, I can't watch it from the start. Yeah, I'll watch I it, exactly I'll watch a minute of it. Yeah. Um, but again, Quiva, my daughter was sitting beside me, and she was like, what's this? What's going <laughs> on there? <laughs> and I was like, it was the bit where Ripley's asleep in the med oh, bay with Newt and, and she's watching it and she's like why is she locked in there now where's her gun gone why is that guy up in super turn safety off, mm-hmm. turn and, and I just turned it off and yeah. I said well yeah. watch this yeah but what no I'm trying questions. to questions that's it what I'm trying to decide now is whether you I wait watch, for me young one yeah. <laughs> do I watch Aliens or do I watch Alien I watch first? Alien she's old enough to take Alien my problem with Alien, and it's not a problem, you know. It's a bit long drawn out. It's a bit long and drawn out. And I don't know if she'll long take it. Long drawn out in a good way, by the way. Definitely. For atmosphere. Definitely. But, but it's, well, uh, I remember going from Aliens to watching Alien as a kid. Because like that, I was like, mm-hmm. there's another one of these movies. And I watched it. Being too young to really understand it's yeah. a different movie. Yeah. And so, I just don't know if it'll grab her in the same way. So, I think watch Aliens with her and then go back. Which is a great thing about Aliens. It hasn't aged. Like, like the practical effects yeah. are fucking glorious in that film. Um, the, the, how they made that the Alien Queen puppet move is just, it's astonishing. Now, like, you talk about studying stuff for film and everything else. Mm. I think fucking special effects artists should study how they made that Alien Queen actually move around the fucking hangar right. again and make it look like an actual Alien, alien it's, Queen. It's, it's, and it's I can guarantee you this happens. Any special effects artist or wannabe special effects artist need to study James Cameron's films. Oh, I'd agree, yeah. Even yeah. True Lies. Yeah, 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 True Lies, yeah. yeah. Fucking love that film. That's class film. Well, so, Alien's a special film. It's it really weird, is. though, when you look at special effects now, the fact that it's all kind of CG-based, you know, shoot somebody in a movie and it's CG blood rather than a blood pack, you know, going off. Yeah, do you, do you remember we seen The Thing in the cinema? When it was relaunched. They re-released, re-released yeah. it, and we went to see it in the cinema world. It was a Disney yeah, yeah, yeah. And we were there and we loved it we know what the movie is we loved everything about it and there was a lot of teenagers there watching it who had never seen a horror movie with practical effects yeah. and the bit where oh, they're doing like, they, 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 they're, they're doing the, the chest the compressions yeah. and mm. the, the chest opens up and the teeth come out and bite the arms off and the head melts off yeah, and the legs laugh. grow out yeah, yeah. Do you remember, I remember that very differently I remember a few people laughing but those people around us were scared shitless well, it's, the, the thing the thing is still powerful this, the, the thing still has I haven't shown it to, to the young lad yet because I want him to be a little bit older for that now that film but, scared the shit I don't even remember this but it's a tension we, we were to going to mm. Florida years and years and years ago we made a stupid plan to stay up all night I that plan <laughs> who made that watch, plan I don't know <laughs> <laughs> um, stay up all night I was asleep after 10 minutes <laughs> one, one of the things we are going to do is watch the thing to try and stay awake and our friend Jay that film scared the living Jesus. That was his first time seeing that, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah, yeah, unbelievable. Scared that the shit. That was our late night channel for our job for a bit. <laughs> yeah, Same. I remember watching it again, quite young, probably too young. I fucking loved it. There is not one bad scene in the thing. There is to no. me that that film is absolutely fucking just a perfect, perfect film. There is. I'm trying to think. You know, is there anything? The, uh, the, anything? Even, even down to the characters. Just think. Think of how many characters there are in the thing, Derek. Yeah, but I know. There's loads of characters, and yet mm. every one of them had time to develop and become yeah. like a really fucking strong character in and of the Even fucking Fuchs. Fuchs is in the film for about five minutes screen time, mm. but you learn that he's like a major. He's like he's not the full doctor. He's studying with uh, Blair to become the full doctor. He uh, gets infected somewhere along the way, panics and runs out and burns himself to death. Do you remember? Because they walk out and they find his fucking body yeah. with a pair of glasses and they know it's Fuchs. Even, even, even that, it's like, like you learn so much about him like, in that one little bit. Like, you know? well, I only watched that, I remember I sent you a couple of weeks ago. 
just I oh, can't yeah. remember why I watched it I just said oh, fuck I'll stick on something I've watched you before you were bleaching your eyes after watching some piece of shit weren't you oh yeah what the fuck did I watch oh that fucking it comes night time or night, yeah, yeah. fucking stupid film yeah, uh, yeah that's it, there's two locked in a cabin with an unknown force outside film side by side which I didn't compare before yeah. one is utter fucking nonsense the other is the thing say, <laughs> the thing yeah near perfection like well, even the blood test scene, like, how good is that scene? Yeah. Like, the, the idea of that scene and everything is class. And then when, uh, uh, it's not Windows, what's his name? Oh, the one whose head splits in the middle and pulls fucking Windows into his head and bites Windows. Oh, I couldn't tell you a character's yeah. name. Oh, what's his name? Anyway, I'm not going to try. I'll be wasting. I'll be dead air trying to think of the fucking name. But it's a, yes, yeah, superb film. So after 15 minutes of Joe trying to remember uh, somebody's name, we are back. <laughs> we're back well this is the nice <laughs> to go into movies but uh, yeah, go, go call them yeah. go call them Mark so we're coming up to where we should be calling the quits so, we're at an hour already yeah so Mark Jeez. Top Gun oh here it's Come incredible on. movie yeah it's incredible it is brilliant in, in what way is it incredible incredible in the same you. way you feel about the Predator it's not to be taken seriously, apart from being a, a recruitment ad for the Navy or the Air Force, or wherever the fuck it is. it is, and like it's 80s all just power for that, balance. That 80s yeah, stop flicking crap. <laughs> it's all full of eighties fucking attitude and aviator glasses and fucking flying jets and yeah. But Joe, I don't know if you're aware of this. Home eroticism. Yeah, Joe was made. Not that home is a bad thing, but when I'm when I'm not gay, it's like. Do you know it was made in the eighties? Yeah. Was it? It was. Holy shit! But you see, you have to view it the same way as you view a predator. No, no, no. <laughs> you do. It's, it's, not, no, it's, it's exactly the same. There's no funny bits in it. It takes itself the seriously. The whole thing is funny because it takes itself seriously. No, no, no Top Gun. No, I, ca- I can't watch Top Gun. I've, I've, I've watched it before. I watched it once and went. And I, when I was older as well, because I needed to see. Okay, what's the now? Granted, I didn't watch it when I was a kid. Mm. And I didn't have, like, I did play with jets and stuff, but yeah. I guarantee if I did watch it when I was a kid, I would have had all my fucking G.I. Joes out playing fucking Top Gun. I'm sure I probably would have appreciated it a bit more. But my dad, and all his wisdom, didn't show it to me. <laughs> because it's shit. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's funny. It doesn't, it takes itself seriously, and that's what's funny about it. Before we wrap up, one of your favourite soundtracks, Mark? Um, oh, one of my favourite soundtracks. I mean... Can't say Star Wars because that's just a given. <laughs> it is. It, it, they're phenomenal. Like you know, we're so um, used to those, those pieces of music, but when you separate them out as you know, they are just incredible. All the soundtracks for for every single Star Wars film, even the ones that uh, John Williams didn't compose. Fucking uh, Rogue One is a beautiful soundtrack, and so is better. So is so. So outside of those, um. I can only really think of like modern soundtracks because that, that, that's what I would listen to when work with Spotify if I'm oh, yeah, working yeah. away on something. Um, all the, the song, all the music from the Christopher Nolan Batman movies. Oh yeah, oh, yeah. brilliant. Um, love all those. The Man of Steel soundtrack. Is that I, love. I don't know. It's mm-hmm. a great soundtrack. Who, who done that? Was that? Um, I think it was Hans Zimmer. It was, yeah. It was the same guy who did uh, Batman, who was Hans Zimmer. Mm. Did all three of them. Cool. That's actually not a bad film. It's like, Great film. Well, I thought when he, this one where he grabs fucking Zor, Zor, Zod, Zod, Zod and snaps his neck, isn't it? I fucking love that. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, whoa, that, is, a that is exactly what Superman would do. That was it's, a deadly scene. I think it's, a, it's a really, I love that movie. A lot of time for it, and what it needed though, it was too dour and too grim, and Superman shouldn't be that just sad all the time. It needed a sequel. To kind where of, he was you know, appreciated Superman where he yeah. actually becomes into Superman and flies around the world and brings it back in time exactly yeah um, <laughs> fixes the great wall of China <laughs> but, but then we got Batman vs Superman instead oh jeez I actually slept or the you fuck keep it that is one of the worst the capes the capes are coming the capes are coming don't sell me a glass of piss and tell me it's orange juice <laughs> that is one of the fucking worst lines I've ever seen I no one turns a glass of piss around is like Ooh. Yeah, the Lex Luthor character, man. Jesse, fucking what's his face? Eisenberg. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Hate it. He's like a fi- he's like a human variant of like a piece of paper, isn't he? He's like that flicky and flappy. Yeah, he's like Tim Roth in Four Rooms. He's just like <laughs> yes! <fucking> yeah. <laughs> arms flailing all about the place. Fucking hate and he's shitting there. Uh, everything. Everything. Yeah. Even Zombieland, <laughs> which even Zombieland, which I enjoyed. I thought it was alright. 
No, he's just he's like Woody Allen. I don't think he's all right in that. I think everybody else in that is so good. You kind of just forget mm. he's there. Yeah, he likes plays this neurotic kind of Woody yeah. Allen type teenager. Yeah, yeah. And he just would pick his head and smash it off the nearest table. So shut up, your life's not a fucking hard. And then when Stupid he's on the ground cunt. choking on his own blood, he's spitting him. Exactly. Yeah. But all his arms seem to be flailing around as well. Yeah. So it's really hard to kind of pin him down. Oh, I'm Lex Luthor. <laughs> Martha. <laughs> <laughs> oh, maybe we should form our own suicide squad or whatever the fucking stupid thing he says in that <laughs> our own Justice League or Injustice League or whatever yeah, I terrible. couldn't watch any more of those fucking but there was so much going films. on that they put too much into it I think didn't they I think that that, that, that was like it was massively bloated Batman was, versus Superman yeah. versus Doomsday versus Wonder Woman yeah there was loads yeah. of shit too much shit going on they shouldn't have called it Batman versus Superman they should have just called it Justice League called it yeah, yeah called it Justice League I did one or the fucking other I know they did both but they're both the fucking same to how me. stupid looking was Batman in this big fucking tank gear he looked ridiculous. Didn't look great. The battle armor thing. Whatever the fuck it was. Yeah, if you look at the comic book on which that's based, it looks fucking deadly. And it's your man Frank Miller drawn. I don't know if you've ever read it. It's Dark Knight Returns. That They it's stripped that from movie, that. Oh yeah, it's a brilliant book. It's, it is a brilliant book. And it's a real weird art style. I know it's hard to capture that art style mm. on screen. But yeah, that looked like shit. And if I hear the name Martha one more time, <laughs> I, fuck, I, was, I was watching that on a fucking plane. I remember I had the earphones in. But you can't watch them films on a plane. No, they're, I think it's crazy. They're the only time I watch films like that. I'm not going to sit down and take two hours when I could be doing something else. You're not going to gonna sit down and watch shit. a proper film on a proper decent screen. But like my point know. is, that's why I watch films like that on planes. Because they are shit. I don't you don't care. know what shit to be watching. I knew it was going to be shit. Why the hell did you know it was going to be shit? Because it was Batman versus Superman. I didn't. I, I heard it was shit. So I said, right, I'll give this a look. There's a great scene in the warehouse where Batman kills everybody. And then, other than that, it's shit. I remember this, yeah, the scene where it's set in the future, a possible future, and Batman has like his fucking that, oh, poster on. coat on, he gets out with one shoot him. No, I thought that bit was cool. It, that was horse shit, because that was Hugh Horn in, because it made no fucking sense in the plot. Sorry, he's asleep. Sorry, sorry there. No, he's asleep at his desk, and next <laughs> thing the Flash turns up and says, oh, uh, save... Is the Flash in there? Yeah. yeah. He turns up and he says, what is it, save Lois or some fuckology? So they, actually, they had a whole time travel subplot set up in that that Batman's dream wasn't a dream it was the future mm. and oh. it was supposed to be picked up then in Justice League um, only oh, this, was, this was if, if Superman and, and Dooms they keep fighting or something is it no if or what Lois Lane here? dies Superman turns that goes mad the yeah. yeah okay right, right, okay okay um, it just it wasn't great and in fairness there's a comic book called actually the video game Injustice it's a DC yeah. kind of Street Fighter beat em up type thing there's a comic book based on that and the premise of that is Lois Lane dies. Superman kills her and goes mental mm. and just tries to please, takes over the world. And it's incredible. So there's good ways to do those stories and that movie just ignored all of them. Yeah. Yeah, I think I think they just took on way too much. Who who directed that again? Batman vs. Superman. Yeah, uh, Zack Snyder. Zack Snyder, yeah. And was and he is he the one who got the trouble now for Touching Kids? Yeah, diddling kids. No, no it's no. Brian Singer. Oh, okay. Take oh, it back. Sorry. What a dick <laughs> I was only watching a documentary oh, of him he, he is when you such this, a he, smarmy do you know that film my, one of my favourite street trash yeah you've heard me talk about street yeah, trash yeah. before and one day we'll sit down and put that on because it's class um, but out of the blue I was watching the, the, the making of the making of like it was filmed years ago when it was put on to like mm. the old DVD release of street trash and it was on the blu-ray and in pops Brian Singer Brian Singer he, is it, sorry Brian Singer is the one that's in kids wasn't it yeah, yeah. yeah him he pops allegedly that's right. That's fucking solid now, isn't it? But he, he, uh, there he is, like, ah. Uh, uh, but I mean, the film was evolved and was like, ah, okay. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. But like, he, he was a, apparently a prick all along, like, you know, not just before he started, or before he was found that he was doing that, apparently he was a prick, full stop. And I remember watching, I watched, you know, like the usual suspects, I enjoyed the first time round, enjoyed the second time round, not so much the third time round. And then you have, what the hell did he make? The X Men films. I enjoyed some of them. Uh, I always enjoyed Tree. You didn't like Tree, you didn't? The the last I aggressively and, hate Tree. Oh, okay. <laughs> the last okay. time with Vina okay. Jones. Okay. Yeah. He, he's the I fucking juggernaut, Jones bitch. Was great as a juggernaut. As, as a juggernaut. What? No, 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 no problems with that. Vina Jones is a great actor. Not as a juggernaut, though. <laughs> 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 no shit. So, anyway, right, before we wrap up. We've already covered Top Gun. We've 
touched on our other embargoed subjects. So, well, I'm going to say we, we cut across the story. Yeah, we have to have Mark back on to, where we have a discussion about TLJ. Yeah, well, you, Mark, and Ian can do your Star Wars thing all you like. Let's do that. So, it's now an hour and nine minutes. So, Mark, you make your point, Joe. You have exactly a minute. Which to retort at which point I'm going to for TLJ? You. I'm going to cut I, you no, off. No, 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 no way, no way. It's it's tempting, but it's it needs a, needs a discussion. Really angry. <laughs> yeah, but you see, you forty percent of all our podcasts are you ranting about that up until the point where we put in the embargo. So I found something else out about it on today. Let's have it in the car. <laughs> <laughs> Mark, what are your feelings on it? Uh, I really, really enjoy seventy percent of that movie. Is it the Count of Boy pitch you don't like? The, bit in the, the reason for the reason for being there is silly, but when they're actually there, it looks grand. It's a shit piece of the film. That's my opinion on that. I'm not gonna argue with you. Um, it is a shit piece of the film. Yeah, that's that was a bit I really did enjoy. The Cut that out. And everything. Hmm? The farriers, at least the farriers, you know. <laughs> the horsey thing. Yeah, 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 that was bullshit. It's nonsense. And actually, hang on, I'm gonna roll back a little bit here. That is why they didn't tell. Poe about the plan was purely so they could shoehorn that bit in which is the worst part of that film so I'm not happy now with the fact that they didn't tell Poe yeah, I tried to make millions and millions of excuses the way they didn't tell P.O.E. about we haven't embargoed with him he's not okay why didn't tell Poe <laughs> why didn't tell Poe about the plan but it's just a plot hole and it, yeah the thing I found out about it is when Ray is and, and Kyler are fighting the Praetorian Guards mm-hmm. one of the Praetorian Guards Ray is fighting has two swords, right? Okay. And they're fighting and fighting and fighting and fighting and fighting. And literally, there's one small cut uh, where he goes to swipe at Ray and Ray blocks it and then cuts him across the chest, I think, or stabs him in the chest with the lightsaber. Okay. Something like that. So he's fighting with two swords and then right when she kills him, he's only one sword in his hand. It was a, it's an actual blooper. Okay. I mean that doesn't make the film better or worse. No, yeah. they, no. they exist in every because movie. So, <laughs> somebody, some, no, no, that's true. But somebody said to me, I was, I, I was saying like one of my favorite scenes in it is the fight with the Praetorian guards. And somebody mentioned recently, I don't know who, I think it might have been Ian, Ian even. Hmm. He said the choreography when you watch that back is not good. It's actually a really poor scene. And I, and I was like, I don't know, but I, I still find it hard putting that film on to watch from the start. But I'm curious now to watch it again to see if the choreography is bad and maybe we're just getting like oh you know kind of uh, brought in by the the zap of the lightsaber through the <coughs> guard's head and I something. feel like what we'll do is we will do a Star Wars Last Jedi specific episode we'll save Derek I have to produce the fucking thing so I'll still be here Derek's gonna suffer <laughs> um, I'm just not gonna weigh in with any we will opinions. watch the Last Jedi first so it's well, we do it up in my house then. And then we we'll will... All, me, Mark, Ian, you, we come up, bring the laptop up, set everything up, watch The Last Jedi, and then we discuss it. Yeah. And then we can discuss. Yeah. It's all fresh in our minds. That's fine. Now, as we re-put in the embargo, any final words? Um, thanks for coming on, Mark. Yeah, thanks, Mark. It's been a good crack. It's yeah. been, been good fun. Thanks yeah. very much for having me. Would you me. come back on again? Uh, I mean, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> well, I wear trousers the next time. I mean, now I'm definitely not coming back. No, no. well, you know, you know, if, we, if you it's, and I ever show up naked in the same room together, we'll just merge together into one. I wouldn't even. It's just the static electricity. Oh yeah. We just yeah. But that's actually what's keeping us away. <laughs> <laughs> the magnetism <laughs> off our hair. If we ever have a ball, we're fucked. You no, know, the, the operation I had was to fix double vision. And it just feels <laughs> like it's, it's. Oh yeah, it's how's your eye actually? Is it, is that's it actually fun, fixed? Yeah. Look at it there. It's all red, gunky, and disgusting. Is it still fucked? It's not. It's just. But that's, your, that's, your le- that's your left eye. That's my left eye. That's only. Did you have the operation on the right eye? No, I almost had the operation on the right eye. They but marked you, the wrong yeah, fucking eye. You had your right spectacle was the one with the weird fucking lines on it. Yeah, but then they fixed the direction of my left eye because they tried oh, it before the right here. eye didn't home. work. Right. Uh, home. Thanks for joining us, Mark. And I'm going to speak really slowly while I try and figure out how to turn this fucking. Bye. <laughs>